Help me, Jesus. I need that or nothing. Help me, Jesus. I need that or nothing. Help me, Jesus. I need that anointing. Help me, Jesus. Now let me stop playing with y'all, man. Good morning. Good morning. Happy uh happy Wednesday. It's your boy Change Agent Cooper coming to you live from Asheville, North Carolina. Hashtag Appalachia Strong. Hashtag 828 is great. Hashtag perseverance versus everything. Today, we're gonna be talking about community health workers and peer support specialists. Community health workers and peer support specialists. This is the topic of this video. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because I've had uh, several people reach out to me inquiring about peer support specialist training, as well as the community health worker um, training that's going on right now. And, and people have been asking questions, wanting to get involved. And so I want to break it down on a video so that you can watch this, pass it on to whoever else may be interested, and then we can go from there. But uh, me, myself, my name is Philip Cooper, Change Agent Cooper. Uh, I've been a certified peer support specialist since 2013, in which uh, I was working at the Neil Dobbins Center. I was doing some case management there as well as working as a behavioral health tech. And then I started doing some work at Next Step Recovery back in 2000, 2013, I believe, as well. And I was working there doing some uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer stuff, mentoring, not sponsoring, but mentoring over there at Next Step, running groups. Shout out to Next Step Recovery. But um now uh what has happened over the over the course of the time, you know, I switched around my jobs, but I stayed involved with peer support specialist work because as a person that's active in the recovery community here in Asheville, and you know, we have a popping uh recovery community here in Asheville, it was hard to detach from the work. And I love to work anyway. It's a way of life. Recovery is a way of life. But so today I wanted to talk about peer support specialists and community health workers. So with that being said, I'm going to read off the definition of what a peer support specialist is. I had people inquiring, wanting to get the certification. And, and this is what I want to want people to refer to moving forward to determine if you qualify to be a peer support specialist. So the definition from the North Carolina UNC uh, is a peer support specialist are, are people living in recovery with, mil, with, with mental illness and or substance use disorder and who provide support to others whom can benefit from their lived experiences. The North Carolina Certified Peer Support Specialist Program provides acknowledgement that a peer has met a set of requirements necessary to provide support to individuals with mental health or substance use disorder. So, for those who are inquiring about being a peer support specialist, it says peer support specialists are people living in recovery with mental illness and or substance use disorder who are currently in recovery. If you meet that criteria, then the peer support is, is along the lines of something that you can do. There are peer support jobs that are open at Mayhek, RHA, uh, first at Blue Ridge has some, some positions open. Um, I know Family Prayers, even WinCap I heard had what we're hiring peer support specialists now. Sunrise, you already know peer led agencies like Sunrise and Umoja have like the peer peer led uh, agencies. So um, there's a peer support specialist jobs open across the county. Peer support is popping. The question is, uh, you know, are you a person with mental illness and or substance use disorder who is currently in recovery? That's the question that you want to ask yourself before you go and become a peer support specialist as it relates to community health worker. So this is a new thing. Right. And I'm going to try not to talk too, too much. I'm going to try to keep this video under 12 minutes, but I got to give it to y'all. So um, I first heard about community health workers um, because I had presented at the statewide reentry council collaborative in uh, Raleigh. And so I met a guy named Dr. Evan Ashkin, and he runs a program called FIT, Formerly Incarcerated Transition Program. And it's it's an amazing program. They're doing it right up there. They have it in Durham. They have it in Mecklenburg. They have it in Orange. They have it in Forsyth. They're doing some great work with the Formerly Incarcerated Transition Program. They connect with people before they get out of prison, welcome them home, make sure they get connected to health care, mental health, all the things, housing, all the things. But they they have community health workers. Yeah. And that's when I first heard about community health workers. And I was like, what's this about? I want to learn more. And so when I got back home, come to find out community health workers were actually already doing some work in Buncombe County, but they just wasn't doing uh, prison reentry work. So at that point in time, I hooked up with my sister, uh, Joanna, you know, over there at a Bipple and, and, you know, and they got community health workers who are out in the community doing some amazing things. So it was at that point in time that I started being more involved in the community health worker conversation. 
So now I'm even in a community health worker class. I reached out to several folks that was doing the work to see if they wanted to do the training. Some people enrolled. Some people didn't have time to. Either way it goes, hopefully another training is going to be offered at AB Tech. Y'all pray. We're trying to make sure it gets offered at AB Tech this time around in the spring. But the community health worker training that I'm doing is online at Catawba Valley Community College. Learning some great things in there. It's a lot of things I already know because I've done a lot of these trainings like peer support, human service, uh, human services technologies, uh, two year degree at AB Tech. So a lot of these things I already knew. But some of what I've learned that is new uh, 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 right now is talking about like NC Cares. Uh, 360, which is a platform where all resources are uploaded. Uh, somebody, listen, that it is dope. Shout out to Dion Greenlee. She's doing some stuff connecting organizations. If you don't know what NC Care 360 is, I highly recommend that you inquire about it for your organization so that you can be uploaded onto that platform. It is a way for all resources in North Carolina are being uploaded. So you ain't got to worry about a resource list anymore. You can go on there. It's, it's amazing. But anyway, let me read off the definition of a community health worker. A community health worker is a frontline public health worker who is a trusted member of and or has an unusually close understanding of the community served. I'm going to repeat that. A frontline public health worker who is a trusted member of and or has an unusually close understanding of the community served. This trusting relationship enables the worker to serve as a liaison link intermediary between health, social services, and the community to facilitate access to services and improve the quality and cultural competence of service delivery. A community health worker also builds individual and community capacity by increasing health knowledge and self-sufficiency through a range of activities such as outreach, community education, informal counseling, social support, and advocacy. So a community health worker from the sound of this is a person who is trusted from the community. It is a person who is trusted from the community that it's serving or has an unusually close connection with the community that it's serving. First and foremost, that's, that's one of the qualifications for a community, community health worker. It also is culturally competent services. So, you know, not just saying that black people can serve black people. That's not always it, you know, but you have to be from a community and community isn't just race because all black people aren't a part of the same community. We have different experiences that put us in certain communities like the returning citizens, people returning from home from prison. That's a community. Certain people who are dealing with chronic illnesses like, you know, uh, or, or mental health conditions, bipolar or schizophrenia or uh, um, uh, hyper hypertension or, or diabetes, different things like that. There's like a community of people that are dealing with certain things. And so a person who is coming from that community has a has has a deep understanding of what it is that people in that community have to go through. And they come in. And as it says, y'all, y'all see what it says. A community health worker builds individual and community capacity by increasing health knowledge and self-sufficiency through a range of activities such as outreach, community education, informal counseling and social support. So these people have to be able to go into that community and be trusted. This is a trusted member of that community. So think about the people who are from the community. What communities do you belong to? Ask yourself, what community do you belong to? And then when you think about that community, who are the trusted servants, the trusted representatives from that community that you believe would bring in uh, with integrity, genuine authenticity, would come in and provide health knowledge, right? And community education, informal counseling and advocacy. I mean, who's going to fight for you? The way I see it, community health workers are bridging the gaps to all of the services, here in this area, we have we, we have I, I, I was told it's third in nonprofits per capita in the state, which means we have a lot of nonprofits. However, there is a significant amount of people that still do not access the resources that are available to them because they need a bridge. They need a bridge. The bridge is the community health workers. The bridge is the community health workers, bridging the gap, community education, advocacy, translating messages from the system to the people. That's what community health worker is. So I did this video because I wanted to differentiate the two because there's there's been some people that have came to me talking about becoming peer supports. And, and in my mind, I was like, well, wow, I didn't even know you had mental health or substance use disorder. I didn't even know you was in recovery, you know, and I'm not the recovery uh, uh, guru. I think I am sometimes, but I'm not the all knowing recovery person. So I don't know if people go to recovery meeting support groups, sponsoring people, getting mentored or have a recovery coach. I don't I don't know that. That's not my business to be honest if they're not in my circle but if they are in my circle it's all of my business because accountability is how we operate
operate on my team. But uh, if a person isn't in recovery and they just want to serve the community and they want to use their lived experience to serve the community, I say they should be a, a, a community health worker. So peer support ain't for everybody. Community health worker can be dependent upon a person's ability uh, uh, to connect with the people from the community that they represent and also being a trusted member of the community that they represent. Because in order for us to provide uh, services to a people, those people have to trust us or we'll just be chasing our tail the way things have been going in the past. And we all know, you know, uh, um, from experience, not not we all, but s several of us know from experience that just having a having a service offer in an area don't necessarily mean that all people are going to benefit from the service. And we know that and we could look at data from a lot of these places to see, you know, who they're really serving and who's not getting served. But that's not the topic of conversation right now. The topic of conversation is peer support specialists and community health workers. I hope I gave a good layout of the two. Um, like I said, I had one of my homeboys reach out to me. He was like, what's this community health worker thing you keep talking about? And I told him about it. And then I had another person inquire about it who is currently a certified peer support specialist. And and, and then when I broke it down for her, she was like, yeah, 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 let me get in the next class. And so now I'm making this YouTube video so that people can refer to this whenever they want to learn more about peer support specialists and community health workers. Now, I'm going to end with this. A person can be a peer support specialist and a community health worker. But in order for them to do that, that person has to let's go back to the definition on the North Carolina school part. It said a peer support specialist is a person living in recovery with mental illness and or substance use disorder. So a person can be a community health worker and a peer support specialist, but a person cannot necessarily be a community health worker. A person can be a community health worker without being a peer support specialist. A peer support specialist, a person that is in recovery from mental illness and substance use disorder, can be a community health worker, right? But a community health worker can still be a community health worker even if they're not in recovery because that's not one of the qualifications for a community health worker. I hope this made sense. My name is Change Agent Cooper. I am not the answer, but I'm for damn sure the alternative. Y'all be blessed.